I'd like to talk to you about praying with Scripture. When we pray with Scripture, we allow God's very words to infuse our prayers. And as we pray back God's words and His will to Him, that the act of even praying it is part of transforming us in the process. We all know that we're called to pray. We're called to, to cry out to God when things are hard in our lives, when we see needs in our family and our friends. We're called to pray with praise and worship and to pray so that we can share life with God. And, and yet, even though prayer is something natural and simple, it's also something that we can learn. It's something that we can grow in. We can grow in our ability to pray with depth and passion as we come to know who God is and what he longs for us in our lives. We discover this in his word, and that same word can be used to enrich our prayers and to transform us as we pray it. Often we, when we pray, we run out of words. We ask God to help and to heal and to encourage and bless and then help again. And then, and then we don't know what else to say. Using the scripture in our prayers is a beautiful way to pray what we know God wants in our lives, in the, the lives of those we love, and in the world that he has made. Sometimes we may want to pray exact words, pray the verses just as they are back to God. And other times you want to take a passage and paraphrase it and personalize it and use it to create a prayer to God. The Psalms are a great place to start. You can take a passage where the psalmist is expressing heartache and discouragement and use it to express your own longings. If you look in um, Psalm 28, you could pray, To you, Lord, I call. You are my rock. Do not turn a deaf ear to me. For if I remain silent, I'll be like those who go down to a pit. Hear my cry for mercy as I call to you for help, as I lift up my hands toward your most holy place. There are so many psalms that, that can give voice to the anguish of our souls, and they're a beautiful place to start. There's also prayers of, for guidance. In Psalm 25, it says, In you, O Lord, I put my trust. I trust in you, don't let me be put to shame, nor that my enemies triumph over me. Show me your ways, Lord, teach me your paths, guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior and my hope is in you all day long. We can use the Psalms to, to guide our, um, give voice to our words of praise. Again, in Psalm 28, it says, Praise be to the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and he is my help. My heart leaps for joy. With a song, I will praise him. It's just full of prayers that you can use. There are also beautiful prayers sprinkled throughout Scripture. There are blessings. In Romans 15, it says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. What a great prayer to pray for someone who's in discouragement, who's struggling. If you go to the letters in the New Testament, there are whole passages that are just beautiful prayers. In Ephesians 2, Paul prays that that we would be strengthened with power, that Christ would dwell in our hearts through faith, that we'd be rooted in love, that we would know the wide and the high expanse of his love, that we'd be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. That's a beautiful prayer. I'd love to know someone was praying that for me. In Colossians 1, he prays that we would have a knowledge of his will, that we'd have wisdom and understanding, that we'd bear fruit and grow in the knowledge of God, be strengthened with power, have endurance and patience. There are people that I know that I can be praying that prayer for and will be blessed by having God's will prayed into their lives. In 2 Thessalonians, um, Paul prays that, that we would be worthy of our calling, that we would live that kind of a life, that God would bring to fruition every good desire that, and every deed prompted by faith. 
What a great thing to pray for someone who's struggling, who feels stuck, that even the desires of their heart, even the things they're prompted to do, that God would make them happen. We have a resource that we've created called Praying God's Promises, and it divides, um, it divides up a whole bunch of scripture into topical categories. So there are verses about um, deliverance, protection, spiritual development, Christ-like character, blessings. These aren't written as prayers, they're just the verse. So if I go through and I look at the section on prayers for Christ-like character, I might go to Philippians 1, 6 and pray for someone I know. Lord, I thank you that I can be confident of this, that you who began a good work in my friend will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Lord, thank you that you did begin that work and that you are in work in them and I can trust you to continue it. Do your work in them today. You can take any of these when you just don't know what words can I use to pray for my friend and go to a topic, find a verse, and shape it into a prayer that you can use. When you begin praying this way, start small. There's, there's so much you can do, you think, ah, I can't do it all. Well, take one passage, take one verse, and say, okay, I'm gonna use that to, to shape my prayers this week. I'm going to pray it every day. Maybe I'll write it on a card, put it on a note of my phone, listen to it um, when I go to a Bible app, and, and just go through it and pray it for myself, for my friends. Make it real. Let it become a part of you and shape the way you're praying for others. We know that it's a good prayer to pray because it's what God says in His Word. I want to finish by praying for you from Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians 1 verse 17 is actually the theme verse for this year as we try to know God better. So let me pray for you. Lord, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give each one of our women, each one in our church, the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we may know you better I pray that the eyes of our hearts may be enlightened in order that we may know the hope to which you have called us, that we may know the riches of your glorious inheritance in, in your holy people, and that we may know the incomparably great power that is for us who believe. Lord, thank you that that power is the same as the mighty strength that was exerted when you raised Jesus Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms. Lord, we claim that power today and ask that you would meet us and help us to know you better. For we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.